Hello everybody, I'm ready to people from Algeria, from Cameroon. While we wait for everybody to join, um, I had like an, like an icebreaker question to ask you, Ceci, which is, what is something you feel grateful about today, uh, Ceci? And by the way, anybody can participate in the icebreaker. So what are you all grateful for today? You can share that in the chat with us. Uh, Ceci, what about you? Well, I feel grateful about um, my family. Like my, um, I'm very proud of my mom and my dad and how they raised me. Like, oh, yeah, <laughs> like, oh, well. that's, that's, an, that's an amazing thing to be grateful yeah, for. I... It's cuter than a dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's cuter than a dog. I like that expression. I think that dogs are the cutest things in the world. Uh, <laughs> I am grateful for, always grateful for my parents also for the opportunities they gave me. Um, I think this week I'm feeling particularly grateful for working with very kind, caring, and intelligent people. Um, and I, I'm not just talking about our team members, also, you know, our students, you know, like you, Ceci, who are like a massive heart, right? but also a brain that is powerful. And that combination is so, so amazing. It really makes me grateful and excited and happy. So thank you uh, for being part of that, Susan. Okay, thanks, Ariel. <laughs> All right, I see uh, uh, people from, let's see, the Dominican, Dominican Republic, um, people from Cabo San Lucas in Mexico, from Peru, from Ghana, from Ecuador, from Nigeria, from Brazil, Turkey, Tanzania, Tanzania, Washington in the U.S. Uh, hello, Jen. How are you doing? That's Washington <laughs> State. Um, from Zambia, more people from Peru, from Greece. Cool. Hello, Nick. Uh, all right. All right. Cool. That's so good. Um, I think we are ready to start. I'm sure some more people will be joining later. But as we always say, we really appreciate and encourage professionalism. But that is punctuality. So thank you, everyone, everybody, for being punctual today. Um, and let me do a quick introduction um, of you, Ceci, and then we're going to jump like, to the conversation. Uh, now, before we do that, um, if you just want to say, go, go, Ceci, you're amazing, you can put that in the chat, okay? Now, if you want to ask me or Ceci, hopefully Ceci, not me, I'm tired of answering questions. Uh, if you, you want to ask our guest star today, Ceci, a question, do it not in the chat but in the Q&A, okay? You have a button that says Q and A, questions and answers. Post the questions there. I'm gonna be keeping an eye. I also have a lot of questions for Ceci. And then we are gonna be asking her, you know, tons of them, as many as we can. Um, so that's it. So Ceci, one, you know, of our Microers uh, graduates, uh, Ceci joined Microers in July of uh, last year. She got her job, which is the moment you, when you graduate from Microverse, her first job of the Microverse in June of this year, so 11 months after the beginning. Um, Ceci is original from, from Paraguay, but based in Costa Rica now. She studied, like, studied me mechatronics engineering. However, uh, Ceci dropped out after two years from uh, the engineering degree to switch careers to become a developer, and we will be talking about that. Um, and then so she has two years uh, working as a JavaScript developer. Uh, she's working as a front-end engineer um, at, an, at an agency called IDO. Um, IDO, um, their headquarters are in Costa Rica, but they hire um, a lot of like, people remotely, um, among them, Ceci, who works remotely. And they work for a lot of clients in the US. They do work around you know, building agile teams and providing web and mobile development. Um, Ceci is working as a front-end developer, uh, working a lot with React. So if you have questions about you know, that side of things, of the technical things, you can also ask. And I think that's enough introduction because everything else I want to use Ceci to be the one talking, not me. So let me kick this off um, with um, maybe a different question than usual, which is, what are you working on this week, Ceci? Well, currently we are doing uh, a project uh, about a medical manifold. So we have to, you're asking like my project, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. at work, I mean, yeah. Okay, okay at work, okay. So <laughs> um, yeah, we are working on that because uh, yeah, we care about healthcare and it's a project about building the interface for 
for building a, a manifold is like uh, this thing that doctors use for filtering liquids and medicines and that stuff. Cool. So we are building the, the interface for that. And uh, in React, and we are um, cre um, using this three kit library that is like a 3D modeling stuff. So it's, it's, it's quite interesting. Let me say, I, I'm re really happy. In nice. Yes, it's, it's really interesting. Is this uh, like an internal project or for a client? Uh, like, like a, yeah, it's like for a, a client. It's for a client. client. Yeah. Cool. Very nice. That sounds exciting work. Like exciting work. <laughs> but you're working as a developer today, but that's not where your career started, right? Like you started studying like mechatronics engineering, which, by the way, it's such a cool thing too. Like that was <laughs> kind of my dream when I was like 15. I was like, I want to be a mechatronics engineer and either build, you know, like something like Jurassic Park with like all like the animals being mechatronic, you know, animals or use that, like build big factories or send robots to Mars. And um, yeah. why did you decide to switch careers and drop out of college and become a developer? Well, the thing is, I always liked mechatronics and, you know, the maths and robotics and all of that, because uh, my dad is such a nerd. Like he always <laughs> play with me, like, take me to the, see Star Wars and the movies and like uh, okay so um, I grew up like having that example and so I, I said I first said okay I want to do this mechatronic thing and then uh, I switched because I started to like um, have these um, designing skills that I like as well so I I turned out liking it, like building the interfaces, like, you know, the, um, the not only the logical part, but also the designing part. And I mix up that in front end development. So it, I turned out like liking that better. <laughs> well, first of all, it sounds like you have a really cool dad, by the way. Uh, and nerds are cool. They were not in the future, but we are very cool now. So, you know, go, go your dad. Um, how did they react to your decision? How did your family, the people around you react to your decision of dropping out of school to become a developer? Well, they didn't like it at first. <laughs> it, they, yeah, it was like, oh my God, what are you gonna do with your life, <laughs> right? So I said, I'm gonna study by, my, by myself. I'm gonna be a self-taught student. And I was like, um, really with that idea that I wanted to, uh, overcome my fears and you know push my, myself so I didn't drop out of, of school because I didn't like to study that's not the why why I left it's the, the opposite <laughs> yeah you want to do that kind of like drive your own learning right yes yes like do my own path and I like it, it was because um in, in college, it's good. I, I had a good background from college. I made good friends, but um, I, I just wanted to learn other things that they weren't teaching in, in the college, you know, like, um, so <laughs> that's I, why. I, I can relate to that. I think, you know, I'll always forever cherish my time in college because some of my best friends in life, I met them there, I had some amazing experiences. But the most important things that I've learned professionally, I didn't learn them uh, at, at, at college. So um, not, not surprised you, you made that decision, but um, I, can, I can see, I can sense like a very strong, you know, person uh, in you, you know, it's not an easy decision to make, especially like if your family kind of like didn't approve at the beginning, but I'm, I'm glad you did it. Oh so my God, how... my, my mom was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yes. She was well, curious. How, how, how does she feel today? Have you talked about this recently? Uh, yeah, she's very proud. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised. She has, she has a lot of reasons to feel, to feel proud of you. <laughs> so how, how was that beginning? So you decided to take the, you know, the, your own fate you know, in your hands and like craft your own learning path. I was the hell, scared as hell. Like it was super scary because I dropped out, out of college. I, I didn't have a job. I was, oh my God. <laughs> it was so hard, really. Like, I, I struggle a lot. And so I, I have to talk about the imposter syndrome because 
you know, like not not being a college graduate makes you like mm, it doesn't make good. Um, how do you say? I didn't have like this um, confidence in myself, like until uh, until microvers, of course. <laughs> and so it was hard. <laughs> I bet. And where where did you start to to learn to code? I started in college, like oh by, yeah, no. yeah. And then like, how did you start your like self-driven you know, process? Like, did you go to like, like any specific course or how did you design what you were going to be doing? Well, I took like every time that I could, I took a, a, a super bestseller Udemy course. Uh -huh. Good, good. <laughs> yeah. And then took courses here and there, maybe Treehouse. I don't know, like every time that I get like the chance to have a course, I, I will do it. And I will really study not also the documentation, go through that, like re reading books and and you seeing the, the tutorials. And you know, you, you learn by repetition, right? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like you do it and keep <laughs> every doing day. it. And keep yeah, doing it do it. and do it yes. again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my God. So what, what was the hardest part about that stage in your journey? Okay, the hardest thing was uh, that my to overcome my fears, my own insecurities, like, um, you know, not being good enough, feeling like you are not good enough, that you are never going to get a job, that... Um, you know, those kind of, of, of fears that are always in, in the back of your head, like telling you, uh, you you're not gonna make it, no, you you don't deserve it, you know? But that that's all lies. You you have to prove prove yourself wrong. <laughs> yeah, imposter syndrome can be can be powerful and it can definitely play against you, right? If like, if you give up, uh, if you compromise for like too little and you feel kind of like not excited about maybe the job you got because that's less than what you were really hoping uh, to be able to, the kind of projects you're doing, um, it's yeah, not the best outcome, but it's normal, right? It, it happens to all of us. Like I, um, I am presenting in a couple of weeks in a very important meeting for a type of meeting for the first time. and. Uh, I'm like feeling imposter syndrome. And I think so many people see me as a very confident person, but I think we all feel kind of like, are we going to be able to do well enough? And I mean, you don't know until you try, right? So that's the only option you have to try and, and show yourself that you can. Um, but so you start in this journey by yourself and eventually you end up at my course. What happened? How did that happen? Okay, so um my sister like she used to work in a local startup in here in my country in paraguay and she had these uh programmer friends that oh sorry um and she gave me this link that was about microverse and she encouraged me to to take that hey hey why don't you do this i heard about uh someone that did it and it went well so why don't you try it right so i always have um people around me that believe in me like that encourage me to 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 follow <laughs> my career path and so i decided to join microverse and I at, at, at first I wasn't sure that I could make it through, but um, I they they you have such this this beautiful community of people, uh, students, and not only the students, you know, also the student success team like Juanjo Willow, you know, Jennifer Riley. I I'm so thankful about to all of them because I, they helped me. A lot in my journey and um, okay so um, I, I, I really recommend people that want to like get involved in tech that they they do this kind of programs like microverse like it's really good what um, other than the support of people 
what else did you find at Microverse that you didn't get or that was very different when you were alone? Okay, um, not, uh, not only the technical part, but um, I, of course I read the curriculum and I, I check, oh, they have React, check, yes, I'm gonna join. But not only that, but I uh, also was lacking some soft uh, skill because I uh, like, sometimes I can be too introvert, like that's my personality trait, right? So um, I try to, you know, overcome uh, that and try to work in team. So I found that Microsoft has this pair programming that is really good. You have to work with people all over the world. Like you have to, I heard you say one time this term global citizen, you mm -hmm. became a global citizen because you have to talk with, it, it doesn't matter. You have to talk with people with color, people, Muslims, Indian guys, um, Nigeria, and, and, and then Central American, and then, you know, Puerto Rico, everyone, like you have to, and also Latin American, of course. But um, <laughs> yeah, you have to learn to talk with everybody and you have to like deconstruct all your prejudice um, and, and just, you know, learn and, and work with them. Yeah, in, it's, in, it's not easy. It's not easy. I was gonna say it's not easy in many ways. It's not about learning, right? It's about unlearning some of the biases and prejudices and constraints that we have been put in our heads when it comes to like believing that things have to be a certain way. And and I think we try. To, it's like a, it's a crash course of like, hey, here you are surrounded by people from a hundred different countries and. You have to figure it out because the only way you can make it to the end is if you make it to the end together. And it's not going to be easy, but you're going to learn a lot of things. <laughs> um, yeah. and, and you mentioned, Ceci, that you were kind of like, I don't remember if you use the word intimidated, but I think you were kind of like worried that you might not be able to like to make it through microverse. And um, uh, Shua, uh, Shua, Shuaib, I think I uh, was asking in the Q&A uh, that he finds the entry exam of my course quite intimidating uh, for someone with no pre or like strong foundation in programming. Um, and he was asking, what can I do to pass the exam? And before I add anything, I would love to hear your, your answer, Ceci, to that question. Well, there, there are a lot of resources that you could do, like probably first, um, you know, practice um, your solving skill with Project Euler or Free Code Cam or whatever, uh, like you know, or even try first solving a few math problems and then programming. Let you know, and you will end up like if you repeat that every day, you will end up passing the exam in no time. Yeah, no, I, I'm absolutely, and, and remember that it's not an exam, right? And that's important. You can't fail it. You can try this 150 times if you want. There's no limit. You try, you get some feedback about how to improve based on how you did the first time. You practice more, you try again, practice more, you try, and you don't need to wait like three months to try away, you, to try again. You can try again, you know, the following day or on the same day if you want, right? So yeah, it's very uh, flexible. It's very flexible. Absolutely. So uh, the, I think the short answer is just try there's nothing to lose by trying. It's that simple, right? You can't fail. There is no negative consequence of trying. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, and the worst part is not having the courage to try because then you will never know if you couldn't have done it. So great, okay. Uh, all right, so what is uh, among all the many things that, that you learned at my course, technical and non-technical, we talked about kind of these like prejudices and learning to work with other people. Uh, but what was like the most important thing? Like now that you're in a job, what was the most important thing that looking back, you think you learned at my course? Well, the most important thing, thing that I learned it was to, um, you know, working in team, actually working in team because, um, you know, not, not all myself, I, I, I just have like, before Microverse had that problem that I wanted to do all by myself. 
but then um, with the pair programming, I, I learned like, you don't, it, it, it doesn't always have to be like that. Absolutely. Um, and and that, that's one of the things that I love about microverse that they don't care, you know, they don't care about your nationality, you, they don't care about your gender, your color, size, whatever. They just care about if you have the, you know, the, the, the talent and the, the passion to, to follow your career. Absolutely. Those are the two things we've shown so far. I mean, and the truth is, of course, you also have to have the availability to join full time and you know a good English level, um, the financial support, those are things that I think um, with all the privilege in my life, sometimes I can give for granted. And that's not the reality for most people. And I think you know it's it's important to address it. And you know, um, there was someone in the QA asking, uh, Fernanda, like, you know, there will be a part-time, you know, program someday. And the answer is yes, but but we don't have a date for that because you know, uh, running a part-time program at the same time of a full-time program. It's kind of like running two programs at the same time, even if the content is the same, the everything that needs to be happening behind the scenes, it has to work differently. And right now we're trying to focus on making the full time program as amazing as it can be and making it all for those who can do that. But I always talk about this like, and like that we're treating this like an onion, right? And not because we make everybody cry, but because, you know, we're killing this, you know, layer by layer. And, you know, today we can help you if you can join full time. We know that leaves a lot of people outside, but we will eventually peel that layer of the, of the onion and start helping people who can join part time. And then we'll peel that again and we're going to help people that don't speak great English yet. And we're going to help with the English as well. Um, and at the end, our goal is that people don't get just like local jobs in their local language, but that they can work internationally, remotely, globally. Yeah. And the language of global communication and collaboration is English. So today you need to bring that into the school, but in the future, I think that will be different. And I think that will be exciting. Um, but talking about, you know, things you learned at Vicarus, what was like the hardest thing that you experienced uh, that you found at Vicarus? Well, the hardest modules for me were, uh, you know, the backend related, like Ruby and Ruby on Rails. That were they were they were tough. Like <laughs> for me, I I so front end oriented person, so that part of the curriculum was hard. I ha I have to, like, fortunately, I had this great partner that he was so backend oriented, and I learned so much from him. He was. Uh, uh, this Muslim guy that at, at first I, I thought, oh, he's a Muslim, right? Oh my God, what am I going to do? But then we became good friends. So it was like, <laughs> like all, all in my head, like, oh, I'm going to judge him because he's Muslim. No. So, <laughs> so yeah, I, I, in, yeah, we became friends and we we had this good time working together and I learned a lot from him and we make it through the Rails modules. It was amazing. Wow, wow. And it's it's nuts to to realize that, you know, in someone like you, Ceci, for example, with your massive heart, right, and all your intelligence and, you know, you are brave enough to recognize those prejudices you had about, you know, someone who is Muslim. But uh, if that's happening to you, and it's happening to me, it's happening to people with education, with, you know, with the big heart, imagine the impact that all these prejudices and biases have in the world today, right? Like, it's not a surprise to me that we are, you know, fighting each other and, you know, um, yeah. struggling to like solve problems together as one. Um, and I think these experiences are so, so, so important so that we can unlearn all those things and realize that who cares which gender, sexuality, uh, you know, nationality, religion, accents you have, as long as we can accomplish great things together, everything else is just an opportunity to learn, uh, right? So I'm glad you were able to get the most out of that experience, which I'm sure, you know, wasn't always easy because it's experiencing something new um it's not necessarily like easy it's just rewarding but it takes hard work yeah it's very rewarding it feels like that <laughs> how how often did you did you feel imposter syndrome uh while at my course oh, 
all the time. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> what, 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 what did you do about it? I'm curious. Not, not only in my career, like since I dropped out of college, I was like <laughs> really yeah. heavy there on the imposter syndrome. Yeah. <laughs> do, do, do you feel imposter syndrome at your job? Uh, yeah, sometimes. No? Yeah, uh, that, that, that's normal too. Uh, I always say, if you don't feel imposter syndrome at my career, you will for sure feel it at your job sooner or later because there's so much to learn. <laughs> um, all right. So let's uh, you know stop talking about my career. Uh, this is about you. And I know people always want to hear about jobs right, and careers and, and all that stuff. So um, you're working for this uh, development agency called I Do. Um, how did you find the job? How do I define the job? Uh, how, did, how did you find uh, that oh. job? Oh, how did I find it? Like, it was from this microwave student that posted that they were looking for React developers. So I kind of, like, I was already in interview prep, finishing that, and I said, oh, oh my God, oh my God, I'm already in job 13. I, I can do it, right? So I, <laughs> I went there and I did my cover letter and my resume and that and all of that, and then just um, gave them and they wanted to you know have an interview with me and then and then first uh, i talked with the human resources and then they wanted the technical interview and then it, it was like the normal process and then they hired me well, how was how was the technical interview what did they ask you to do well, they asked me about um, my programming experience with JavaScript and they did questions related to, you know, programming and, uh, and then React. <laughs> yeah. Did they give you any like coding test or assignment to do? No, they, it was more like a theoretical interview. A theoretical, okay. That, 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 that's common as well. Um, how what did they what did they ask you in the human resources interview? That was more like behavioral, like um, they wanted to know me better. <laughs> did the did the the behavioral like you know interview prep at my course help you with those questions? Definitely, that that module you don't have to skip it, <laughs> and it's really good content. It's, it's easy to believe, well, no, that's not that important, but, you know, that's kind of like half no. of the interview process. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, don't give me one. Give me one second. I need to like, I have a, I'm taking care of my sister's dog this weekend. She loves scratching the dog if I don't let her in. Okay, there we go. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> um, all right, so do the interview process and did you, were you like, applying to other jobs at the same time or this was kind of like right before you started applying to jobs you saw this one you applied and it happened okay I started to apply to jobs when I was in interview prep mm -hmm. so I kind of was doing that on parallel like you know and it actually took me like two months of job search but I totally um I, I'm glad that it take that long because I my my job right now is really I'm I'm grateful like it really is worth it. <laughs> what um I guess a, a kind of question I think people will want to hear is like how do the salaries of maybe a potential job as a as a mechatronic engineer in Paraguay compare to this uh, remote job for I do? Well, let's say that what I had before a local job in Paraguay and the salary wasn't as good as now, like in my current job. So uh, I will say that you can increase your salary. Like uh, mm, I, I believe that it's, it's the same as you say that you can increase triple your salary in if you finish is is true. I, I will say that that is true. I don't want to say any specific amount. Because, no, 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 sorry, that was not my the point of, on my question. But I I'm always curious. I think you know something that I, and I was mentioning this before. We're really trying to provide a training and all the international part, international collaboration is because of this, uh, where you can end up working in a company that has much more international exposure, which often leads to also higher salaries. And I'm, I'm, I'm always curious to ask, 
not about the specific number, but about like, is there a difference in salaries between local jobs and kind of remote international jobs like this one? Well, it is different. Like <laughs> I do recommend people to look <laughs> for remote opportunities if, if they can. Yeah. Yes. What, uh, what do you think are some of the skills that are required for in order to get not a local job, but a remote international job like this one? Well, you have to have uh, the skills, you know, you have to um, work in team um, and have um, a certain level of English, like a minimal and also, you know, the programming skills. Do you think that the, the level expected for an international job in terms of programming skills is higher than in local jobs? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there is more, there are a lot of jobs, but there is a lot of competition. So, yeah. The, yeah, there is a lot of people you have to compete with. So, it, it's kind of, you have to push yourself if you want to get that job. What, uh, what do you think, what was like your superpower to get this job if you had to choose one thing? My superpower will be like solve any bug or error like just with a click. <laughs> oh, that, that's that's a cool. Wait, that's a superpower you do have already? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was like, that is an amazing superpower. I, you know. No, uh, <laughs> I have to do the research. I can't know. I struggle with bugs and errors. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um, was there any any specific skill that you think differentiated you from from other candidates in this job? Yeah, I will say that uh, my perseverance, like I'm very perseverant. That's a great one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, 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 Shwai was asking a question that I think you might relate to, which is how do you balance the desire of wanting to get a job quickly and the months long like learning of uh, the micro program? Uh, Shwai was saying, this has wasted a lot of my time. Um. Okay, so you have to focus in what you want to achieve, right? So you, you, I know you can get like, you know, you finish rails and you already want to, you know, jump and I want this job already, but um, you can, you know, finish the whole curriculum, graduate, and then have like uh, this big job. Like it, it depends on what you want to achieve, right? Yeah, no, that, 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 that makes sense. I think, um, for example, if you don't finish the entire program, you don't get to do the interview prep, right? And that is changing now with MyCourse 2.0. It's um, uh, interview prep, it's integrated with the rest of the curriculum through the entire program. Uh, but at the same time, MyCourse 2.0, it's so much more intense than 1.0 that you can't get distracted by looking for jobs because then you miss the deadlines of the program and then you need to repeat the whole week again. And then, you know, so it's different, but I think, you know, interview prep, at least in my course 1.0, gave you all the skills for interviewing. So if you were to look for a job before interview prep, uh, most likely your salary was going to be lower because you were not as prepared for the interview. You will right? not be, no, yeah, you definitely, because in the interview prep, you focus on your, on all your what you how, how you have to sell yourself and not only that you you learn about you know how to answer correctly uh, the technical questions and then um, I don't know you have you have to do interview prep otherwise you won't get a, a good job yeah. I think yeah that makes total sense um uh someone was asking how long it took you to get uh, your job I think you said two months right Two months of job searching, yes. And um, any any rejection in the meantime? Yes, of course, many. <laughs> Can you quantify them? How many, more or less? Okay, I don't. I didn't. I lost the count, but I think it's. I have this account where it's all registered, so <laughs> I have it there. But yeah, of course, you have to deal with rejection. You have to deal with it. <laughs> um. Any, any piece of advice for people to learn to deal with that rejection? Um, just don't, don't feel discouraged. Um, just keep believing that you can do it and just keep working. <laughs> There's no other choice, right? It's either you that or giving up. 
don't have other choice. <laughs> it is. There is nothing you can do about a rejection other than okay, learning something from that and moving forward. Yeah. All right. So, um, quick question. I think will be also uh, that will be also interesting because you're working remotely. Uh, what does a typical day of work look for you? So a typical day will be like I wake up, I take a shower, and then I have my breakfast. And then after breakfast, I go to the computer. And I start like looking my ticket and the ticket I have to do for the, for, um, okay. So I read the description and, and that, and I start working on that. And then we have all, all, every day we have this morning meeting with the client and with some of the, the, the dev developer team. So we all start in, in the same page, right? And then after that, we, if we have like blockers or struggle, we can have internal calls between developers. And then we just keep doing our work. And every Friday, we, um, we have to push, uh, well, we push everything to Git every day, but in Friday, we merge our branches into the, into the master branch. So we have the latest update there. And you go to production with new features on Friday. That's scary for the weekends. No, well, well, it depends. Sometimes it's master, sometimes it's development. So okay. it depends on the, yeah, no, it's not always the release day. Okay, I know. Well, I guess, yeah. I, I know I know some people are like, no, never push something live on Friday. I want my weekend. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. <laughs> About that, yeah, sometimes we work on, on, on the weekends, but is is you have the extra payment and all of okay. that and it's not mandatory of course it's not mandatory so yeah that, that, that's great that the company recognizes the the extra effort that it takes yeah 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 so how has your life changed with uh with this new job well it has changed a lot like um now i can help my family um you know, my mom, um, my sister, like, well, I live with my grandmother, so I have to um, invest a lot in healthcare, like, you know, um, and then there's also the, the treatment that I help my, my mom pay for his treatment, hair treatment, sorry, and uh, yeah, and uh, it, it's been like, really good like <laughs> for for us to, to to have this opportunity mm. well that's that's powerful yeah. um makes me so you know i think the world is so focused so often on you know money and stuff like that but then when I kind of like think about some of the things you have said, right? Like, you know, the biases, the prejudices of, you know, relearning what it takes to work with people who are different to you and uh, being able to help your family, you know, your grandmother, your mother. Um, I'm so, so grateful about, you know, the job I have. So thank you, Ceci, for giving me the opportunity to have that job uh, because, you know, it's because of you, the students, that, that we have our job. and like being able to have an impact in the world that is not just measuring dollars, but also on intangible things like that one, you know, puts a, makes my, my heart really like, you know. Oh my like, God, are you, you are so humble. Like, <laughs> no, no, no. It's like, I mean, I, I always say that, you know, something like my career is super stimulating, intellectually speaking, you know, like how to come up with all the processes that we are reinventing education. We're reinventing how we're financing education, we're trying to think long term to make a big impact. But at the end, it's like each one of you, each time one of you gets a job and is happy and you help your family, those are the things that keep you going every day, right? The other things are stimulating, but the things that keep you going are, are the people. And um, I was mentioning before, I'm really grateful for the team, but then also students, students are the reason we are all together here. Without you, there wouldn't be my career. So, uh, you know, again, again, thanks. I, I'm glad that you feel grateful about my career. I feel very grateful if you too. <laughs> so let, let's change topic a little bit. And I think you are the second, 
Yeah, the second uh, woman who is, uh, you know, graduate who is doing a lunch and learn with my course. And first of all, I feel very grateful that, that you had, you know, the courage to do it. Um, and it was not necessarily easy. It's, a, it's an industry so dominated by, by men, uh, also with a lot of prejudices and, and stuff that is like simply wrong. And, and I was curious to hear how was your experience as a woman in the program at my course and then in the field of, you know, software development? Well, well, it's it's like like every every other woman. Like we we have to be fighters. We have to uh, live in uh, a man's world, and and yeah, you have to uh, always deal with that. And but but it's not that it's not all that bad. Like um, uh. You know, I, I, I would like to encourage more women, like they have to be brave and start working in tech fields and start studying this kind of, of, of stuff. And, you know, just they, they can do it, like they can be as good as men. So <laughs> it's not better, yeah. by the way. <laughs> no, no, I, I not say very, but the same, like it will be equal. And yeah, I, I, I do believe in this world where we can, you know, all be at the same level. So you're, you're telling women around the world, go and make it happen and fight. And it's not yes. going to be easy, but go and fight. Yes. Any, any piece of advice for other people like me as a man who want to be advocates to help more women get into tech to who want to help change the tech world so it's not a male dominated you know feel um any piece of advice well you just have to keep doing what you're doing you're you are you're doing very well <laughs> like, oh, but forget about me okay what for people who like you know forget about me other people out there uh who want to be advocated on this what what well, is something they can do to make this better i just i'm just thinking about my male friends and all of them had this in common that they are, you know, uh, polite to women. They have to, like, they have this sense of duty to protect them and to, you know, um, give, also give them the space they need and freedom, you know, that's very important. Powerful uh, <laughs> war that one freedom with everything we're experiencing right now in the world. Uh, Feel like that can be a lunch and learn by itself. Uh, maybe a good opportunity to talk about maybe freedom as a topic. Uh, I, I think at the end we are we are trying to give people more freedom at Microsoft, right? Like to not be limited by or not for their lives to not be determined like by the place where they were born. Uh, but of course, you know there are so many people that don't even have the chance to be able to join Microsoft. Like I, I remember. I was talking to a student, um, female student from, I think from Nigeria. And she told me like, Ariel, like if my brother uh, joined my careers, you know, my dad, my mom, like we'll never bother him if he was in the house, you know, learning at my careers. But if I'm in the house, right? And I'm learning at my careers, it doesn't matter. That comes second to me helping my mom and my little brothers and mm -hmm. sisters. So like, like yeah. how can we, you know, thinking about freedom and equal opportunities if you know in every possible way in so many ways like you know we are already in such different places when it comes to advantages so uh, well th thanks thanks for sharing uh that uh that piece of feedback i really really appreciate it um we have a few more questions here team uh for you Ceci, like what was the what was the most difficult point of being a software developer so far Mm, well, the most difficult, yeah, I think, is dealing with your own insecurities, your imposter syndrome, not being as good enough. Like you, you have these people, programmers that you admire, and you, you, you always think, oh, I want to be like him. I, I'm not good enough. You know, like you, you always have this, this kind of struggle. Yeah, that, that, that makes so much sense. We are our worst enemies so often. 
that that little voice talking to us all the time. And um, I was uh, doing a, a course on uh, also meditation and mindfulness, and and I heard something that was that made me think a lot, which was if people were to talk to us like we talk to ourselves, we'll say like, get the heck out of here. Why are you talking to me like that? Yet so often we talk ourselves and that little voice is like, you're not good enough. You're not, you're not smart enough. And we let that happen because, you know, we accept it as our own. But I think it's so important to recognize that and say, hey, is that true? Is that a fact? Or is this the, a thought that I need to like, you know, listen to? It's like, no, that's really not true. So get away of here. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of, you know, our own thoughts can be toxic sometimes, like, to ourselves. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I'm looking at more questions here. Erin uh, okay. um, Gozzi is asking, what is one mistake maybe you have regrets about uh, all through your path, to your path to becoming a developer, uh, and you like, that you will advise upcoming developers to avoid? Maybe something technical, maybe otherwise. Regrets uh, or mistakes, many mistakes that you regret. Okay, let me think about that. <laughs> like, if, if I don't think I have like regrets, my course was like such a good experience. I made friends, I learned a lot. Um, what kind of mistakes? Like, mm, I, I, I can, I get, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. Um, maybe the Ruby part take me too long and maybe I regret that I spent too much time on that. I don't know. <laughs> what, okay, let's see if we can go uh, to learning something from that. Why did it take you so long to go through Ruby? Well, because I am not such a, uh, as good as a, a backend developer. Like my forte is more frontend, so um yeah, I struggled with that, with the rails and that. Is there something you could have done differently about Ruby and Ruby and Rails to go through it faster? Mm, maybe, I don't know, could copy more of my partner's code, cheat more, I don't know, maybe. But you, you wouldn't have learned, right? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't have learned if I did that. You no, know, I, I guess my point is that, um, you know, so often when we think about mistakes, you're like, well, you know, I wish I could have gone faster through Ruby. But at the end, you went at the pace that you were supposed to go, right? And, and again, going back to imposter syndrome and all of that, um, is that so often we tell us like, you know, oh, I should have done that better. I should have done faster. It's like, if you believe you did your best, that's it. You can't do best than your best. So why will you punish yourself for not doing better, you know? So anyway, uh, <laughs> I think we can all learn about being kinder to ourselves. I think that's, that's very important. Um, and by the way, um, Ari is also asking, how do you balance uh, your, te your tech job, since also, it's also very demanding, with your social life, family, and, and otherwise? Well, that's a, a good question because well um yeah that that's kind of the issue when uh you have this this kind of job like you don't have much of of a social life and especially now with the pandemic so uh yeah you have to like be there <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, it's not always easy so yeah do you have any any ritual any anything that helps you balance a little, a little bit? Mm, yeah, I, I, I go out sometimes like to talk with people just for a walk or um, on the weekends, maybe I go visit my cousin. Uh, it's not always because we are like, you know, in pandemic. So we, we don't have yeah. to do that too often. So mm, yeah. <laughs> I feel like right now with the pandemic, we have to be twice as intentional or 10 times as intentional as before about balancing all the work with like other sides of life because before they happen more naturally, more easily. Now, like you need to put your fears away because of the pandemic, you need to think about restrictions, uh, safety measurements. And yeah, I think my, yeah, my, my piece of advice right now is to be 
very intentional by creating like habits to say, you know, I don't know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I go and do this activity outside of the house or I go and visit these people. Or for example, something we do with, with my wife is like every Wednesday night, we have a shared calendar invite with um, friends. And every week, one different person in the group chooses a restaurant and we all have dinner together every single Wednesday, right? Oh my right? God, that's so much fun. Oh yeah. My God. And it, it's something we couldn't do for a long time because of the pandemic. And we started um, a month and a half ago again. And, and it feels so good because like, then you don't need to think about it. It's happening every week by default. And, and it forces us, even if we are tired, right? It's, it's like, like, you know, like the pair programming and micro. It's like your coding partner is going to be there. You need to show up. Well, my friends are going to be in the restaurant waiting for me. I need to show up. So sometimes you have to be as intentional about, about work as you have to be about you know, other sides of life. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like that pressure when you feel when other people depend on you, like yeah. you feel the pressure. The, the, the accountability we talk so often about, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, we are getting close to the end. Um, there are some questions here about kind of like overall my careers. Um, Muhammad was asking, it's still not clear for me what the journey with my careers is. I mean, I need a summary for the process. So Muhammad, I need to ask you for a favor, okay? The, it, it's just one step, but it will help in two different ways. The first one is, please uh, reach out to the admissions team. I'm gonna put the email here, admissions at microers.org. And, and you can tell the admissions team, hey, can you help me understand what the journey of microers looks like? And can you make it so that other people with the same question that I have will have a good answer in the future, right? I think. The best thing about asking questions is that not only you help yourself, but if the people answering the question can think, okay, how do I make so other people don't have to ask the question again because they can find the information more easily. It's, you know, twice as good. So Mohammed, if you can send that email, not only you will help yourself, you're going to be helping a lot of other people in the future. So thank you for asking the question. Uh, and then uh, Shai, you're asking, are there fixed start dates for the Microverse courses? And like Microverse has one program and it starts every five weeks same program every five weeks. And then uh, it lasts around 10 months uh, right now. Uh, it's a little bit shorter than Microsoft 1.0. So every five weeks, you have an opportunity to start again. There are waiting lists in some countries, some regions. We have kind of diversity criteria and quotas for each continent and each country. So that we have um, people from all parts of the world in, in the program. Uh, so don't wait until the last day. There are deadlines. If you search on Google, uh, when will the next class start my course, you're going to see the deadlines to join the October class, the November class, the January class, and so on. But every five weeks, we start again. Uh, and then one last question for you, uh, Ceci from Jasmine is, did you find support anywhere in your country when it came to learning, growing, and job searching? Yes. Yes. Um, yes. Well, the thing is, I find support. Like, I, I, I had this local job before. So um, I have friends there. Um, also, there is this group of in Telegram that you can just ask whatever and they will help you. Um, also, my dad is a programmer, so <laughs> I can ask him. That's I don't great. Know. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think local support, it's always very useful. And it's something we want to be doing more of in the future. Um, we have a project right now in, in Zambia um, where micro students from Zambia can go and move to a house with other micro students and they get that for free. They have free internet, housing, meals and everything. And, you know, we really want to, we're thinking about, and it might take 10 years to, for this to really happen at scale, but uh, one of the micro had as a name, like two purposes. One is the idea that we want to make the universe, the world, like, you know, smaller so that we're all closer together to each other, right? That's kind of the first meaning. But the second idea is to then bring that into microverses around the world. So the idea is to open like kind of like co-learning spaces so that you can physically go wherever you are to a place where not only you have access to like, you know, the overall international community of microverses, but also to access to local infrastructure, to local support, community, people around you, to complement the international support you get at micro. So I really, really, you know, look forward to being able to work on, on those things in the future. Again, like the onion, 
it will take some layers that we have to peel to get to that, but, uh, but we will get uh, to that. So Ceci, just to close, um, a final piece of advice that you wanna share with um, maybe people who are going through my course right now or people who wanna, um, who are, are aspiring to become software developers. Oh well, yeah, my, my, my advice will be for every uh, man and woman that want to become a developer that you will always have to deal with this, uh, you know, in, in, imposter syndrome and these toxic thoughts in your head. So just don't get discouraged about that um, because you can do it. You have to believe in yourself and that's, that's it. Right. It's a great way to close, to wrap up um, everything else we have been uh, talking, which uh, I guess imposter syndrome was very present in the conversation today. And it's always present, I guess that's the point. So Ceci, um, is there any way that people can contact with you if you have questions like LinkedIn, Twitter, like? Sure, let me um, leave you in the chat. Maybe I can leave my GitHub. Let me just search it. Uh... I have it here if you want. I come prepared to all this, you know, conversations. Oh my God, okay. If you can share there. <laughs> there, we, I... <laughs> there we go. Ceci's GitHub profile. <laughs> well, Ceci and everybody, thank you so much. Very grateful for you, as I said before, Ceci. Also grateful to everyone who, who was able to, to join for all the amazing questions. Um, and I say this, but every time I say this, I say it with, you know, with really a lot of intentionality and, and a true meaning in my heart, which is I look forward so to like seeing you grow in, in your career. Uh, I am sure this is just the beginning and it's already something amazing to be, to feel very proud of. Uh, but I just can't wait to see, you know, where, where this journey gets you. Please let us know how we can help. We're always like your, your fans, your cheerleaders, like your support <laughs> here. Uh, and that goes to everyone else, you know, trying whether you are doing the trials right now or the coding challenges, or you're in the middle of the program, or you're being rejected when you apply to jobs, whatever you are, um, we're here to help you. Uh, that's our only goal. So let us know how we can help and how we can help better. We're always learning and improving. So again, thank you so much, Ceci, and thank you everybody. It was great to have you here. Have a beautiful day. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody.